Hello and welcome to practice 1 of 15 of Circuit Lab. This is provided free of charge by the National Science Olympiad for all students, coaches, and teams in Circuit Lab. My name is Mr. Burles. Some of the ground rules. I'm not going to read all the bullets, but these slides are available in the Dropbox. This is not to replace what your coach is already teaching you. Make sure that you use this to augment what you're already doing. The rules, and clarifications, and FAQs are found at the official website at www.soinc.org. Remember, you're responsible for learning all of this material on your own, so please follow all the safety rules, and we will be putting a general guide of safety rules in the Dropbox later this year. Put any questions in the comments section, always come prepared, and remember to listen, participate, and always follow your coaches. A good binder is like having an open book test. So keep in mind, you should put everything in your binder that you need to look up later. And you need to have it such that it's easy to read and easy to f find. Make sure it's organized and tabbed so that you and your partner can use it. Use it for everything. Use it when you study. Use it when you take practice tests. Use it during competitions. When you solve a difficult problem or you have a key from a previous test, Put that in there, but make sure it shows all the details so you can use that as your guide in case you come across a similar problem. Make sure you use sheet protectors, and these are just some general guidelines for binders. So we're going to go over the introduction and rules, the basics of electricity. We're going to talk about how to do a practical, and we're also going to talk about homework. Who am I? My name is Russ Burleson. I'm an electrical engineer, and I'm a member of the National Science Olympic Physics Committee. I've been an event supervisor and a coach. I'm currently an engineer at Northrop Grumman and I've got a master's in electrical engineering. I've got three kids and only one of them actually did Science Olympiad and he didn't do this event. So please get input from several people but always work with your coach first. So let's talk about the general rules and scoring. You're allowed to use notes and or calculators. This is why the binder is so important. Make sure you follow all the rules for the binder. The test portion is about 50 to 75 percent of the score, and the practical or hands-on portion is about 25 per to 50 percent. You'll need to know history at a very high level, properties of electrical charge, DC or direct current characteristics, AC characteristics, concepts and units of current, voltage and resistance, information about magnetic poles and fields. You'll need to know about how light switches work, how to do simple measurements, basic characteristics and operation of light emitting diodes, LEDs. Simple circuit analysis using Kirchhoff and voltage laws is, is possible for division C only and it's shown here by being underlined along with basic digital logic, RC circuits, electrical characteristics of a silicon PN junction, and the basics and application of operational amplifiers. I generally recommend that when you have a practice, you try to do it at least once a week, studying between practices. Carve out about an hour to an hour and a half, where you'll want a great homework, learn the lesson of the day, in practice quick tests, do some practical hands-on work, and then working on what's your next homework. If you miss a practice, remember you're responsible to get the notes and homework to be ready for the next practice. So what are some resources? Everything that you find in this Dropbox is yours. Textbooks, especially those focused on electricity and magnetism. I find Wikipedia is a great place to start. It usually has a very good overview. But one thing to keep in mind is that you need to add other things. Khan Academy, Hyperscience, Bozeman Science, Electronics Tutorials, they also have some great resources or videos. And you'll notice off to the right, several links are provided that have lots of really good information. Remember, the official rules and information is at www.soinc.org. However, www.scioli.org is an alumni-run website that has tons of great resources, especially old tests. Just keep in mind, it's not official, and everything there is just for opinion. Do make sure that you do not get caught up in any arguments online, because we're all in this together. Things to consider. Winners prepare. No one was born knowing this material. So whoever's going to study and do the homework and do the most practice is going to do better. Plan on doing this at least a few times a week in addition to practice. 
Winners also work together, so be a good partner. Work off of each other's strengths. Practice together. And the other thing I'd like you to consider is that event supervisors are volunteers. They've given up their time, their energy to run this competition and to run this event. Some are going to be more experienced than others. Some are honestly better than others. Some know the rules more than others. So please be respectful and work with them. Always listen to their instructions before you start asking questions. And remember, different event supervisors will ask the exact same question quite differently. However, occasionally there will be an illegal question. So make sure you've read the question completely to ensure it really is illegal. The event supervisor might have old rules, but double check your rules first. Also, ask them how you can implement the question within the rules. In other words, can you remove the illegal item? Can you change it to DC instead of AC? Whatever it is that would help. Reference a specific rule. Normally it's going to be in section 3D, but make sure you're very specific. Keep in mind that things like diodes, LEDs, transistors, op amps, and integrated circuits are not usually allowed. But now, LEDs, diodes, and op amps are, are allowed in certain circumstances. AC circuit theory can include things like frequency analysis, two or three phase power, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they can often be made legal by switching to a DC system, and there are some valid AC circuit questions now. So keep in mind, several items are available only for Division C and not for B. So let's talk about the basics of electricity. All matter is made up of atoms. An atom has a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud. Within the nucleus, you have protons, which are positive charged uh, particles that have a weight to them. And you also have neutral charged particles that have approximately the same weight to them. The negative charged particles that envelop and circle around the nucleus are called electrons and they have virtually no rest mass. It's very, very low. Electrical current is caused by the movement of the electrons or where the electron isn't, called a hole, going from one atom to the next, usually by some sort of electric field or voltage. Keep in mind, all the electrons are usually flowed across the valence band or the outer shell. So who are some famous electrical scientists? You've got Thales and Miletus, you've got Ben Franklin, you've got Nikola Tesla, and my favorite, Emperor Palpatine. That's a little bit of a joke, but what I want you to keep in mind is that you're going to need to know several scientists. And I would recommend having an entire section just dedicated to the, to, to the scientists so that you can know which one you're being asked questions about. But the big three are Volta, Ampere, and Ohm because they all combine together for Ohm's Law, which is V equals IR. You can use simple algebra to also solve for I is equal to V divided by R, or R is equal to V divided by I. These will formulate the most important formulas that we're going to cover within Circuit Lab. So I would recommend to use this early and often, such that you never have to even look this up anymore. So let's talk about some important terms. A volt is a unit of electrical potential, or how much strength the charge is pushed. Most batteries are anywhere from 1.5 to 24 volts. Now keep in mind that home electricity is like 110 to 220 volts, so that's a lot lower. And we're also going to talk about that it's also alternating current. Lightning is DC and can be millions of volts. Sometimes called potential difference, sometimes called electromotive force. It's the force behind the electrons to make them move. The ampere is a unit of electric current, or how many electrons go past a given point in a second. It's usually in coulombs per second. Also called an amp. And an, an amperage can heat up a wire such that too much can melt a wire and start a fire. That's why we have breakers and fuses. Direct current is an electric current that goes in the same direction. Okay, All batteries are going to be DC. Most electronics need DC, so therefore you're going to have to have special transformers and rectifiers to turn that wall AC current into DC current. Virtually all of the problems that you're going to run into in Circuit Lab are DC. However, alternating current is the electric current that re regularly reverses direction. The stuff that comes into your house is AC current, and it's a sinusoid. 
it's much more dangerous than DC. And that's why so many people get electrocuted. AC has less power loss to heat during transmission, and so that's why it's used for generation and transmission. It's also transmitted at very high voltages, and it has to go through many step-down transformers to lower the voltage before it can come into your house, usually around 220 volts AC in the U.S. Resistance is the opposition against the free transfer of electrons in a conductor. So, some things have low resistance. We call them conductors, like copper, silver. Some have very high resistance, like glass, wood, rubber, plastic, and we call them insulators. The transfer of current is usually due to some force, like the EMF from the voltage of a battery. We measure this in ohms, which is a unit of electric resistance which is equal to a volt divided by an ampere. So, how do you figure out what the resistance is of a material? Many resistors and conductors have a uniform cross-section with a uniform flow of electric current. So if they're made by one material, this resistivity, rho, is equal to R times the area divided by L, or the resistance is equal to rho times the length divided by the area. So what that means is, is that the higher the resistivity, the higher the resistance. The longer the length, the higher the resistance. But the bigger the area, the smaller the resistance. So a very short, very thick wire with a big cross section that is uh, made of a conductor, like let's say copper, has very low resistance, especially if we can keep it cold. The warmer you get something, usually the higher the resistance gets. So, make sure you always have your tables of resistivity. Okay, superconductors usually have a resistivity of about zero ohm meters. Metals and conductors, you're talking about 10 to the minus eighth, or that's 0 0.70s and a 1. Semiconductors are variable, and we'll learn how to dope those later. Insulators are like 10 to the 16th. That's one with 16 zero ohm meters. And super insulators have infinite resistance. Some of your top common conductors are silver, copper, gold, and aluminum. Uh, the semiconductors you need to know are like gallium, arsenide, germanium, and of course silicon. Uh, some of the best insulators are glass, diamond, hard rubber, air, dry wood, fused quartz, and then some specialty materials like PET and Teflon. Keep in mind, in your homework generator, under the material characteristics data sheet, I've listed uh, a lot of these material characteristics from Wikipedia. Now remember, physics teachers and engineers look at problems differently. They're both right, though. You have to be prepared because you don't know who's going to be writing the test. Always look at lots of different tests because you get a flavor for how the different way questions can be asked. If you look to the diagrams on the right, they're actually the same circuit, except one's using voltage and the other one's using or electromotor force. It's the same thing. And you got to remember, most of the time we'll be talking about something called conventional current, which flows out of the positive side of the battery, flows through, back to the circuit, into the negative side. Now, this is not the direction that the electrons flow. This is the direction that the positive charges where the electrons aren't flow. They're referred to as holes. A physicist said, hey look, electrons are really the thing that moves, so they want to call something real current, which is the flow of electrons, which goes out of the negative terminal around to the positive terminal. So real current in this example above would go counterclockwise, whereas conventional current, the one that we'll normally use, will go clockwise A lot of people like to compare it to water flowing. So think of pressure as being voltage, flow is like amperage, and resistance is how difficult it is for the water to flow. And the pump is like the voltage source, like a battery. So in this particular case here, it's a closed circuit. You'll notice that we start at a very low pressure or a very low voltage. We go through our battery, which increases the pressure to a very high pressure. Okay, so it raises it just like a battery raises the voltage. It then flows through a small hole. If the hole's really small, it's got a high resistance. If the hole is really big, it's got a very low resistance. And if it's got a high resistance, then it's less current, less flow. 
If it's got a low resistance, it's a lot more flow. So, what I'd like everyone to do is pause while you get several batteries of different types and voltages. Identify the different parts of the battery and set up a circuit with a switch. Keep in mind the circuit is powered by a battery where the current can flow from the positive side to the negative side. If you have a break in that circuit, it's called an open circuit and current can't flow. However, if you make a circuit that connects the positive to the negative side without any resistance, it's called a short circuit and that's quite dangerous and it'll drain your batteries if it doesn't start a fire. Let's talk about homework number one. I'd like you to make a wiring diagram of one room in your house. Please make sure you pick a room in the house that's got a switch, that's got a whole bunch of outlets, got some lights, maybe a fan, etc. And you really want to know how the current flows. Also do the same thing for a flashlight. The other homework is to use the homework generator that you find in the Dropbox. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet which creates a random problem sheet to allow you to practice. Each tab represents a different level of difficulty or a different topic. So what I want you to do for this first one is do level one VIR. It's simple voltage, simple current, and simple resistance uh, problems in a series circuit. The answers are either provided at the bottom of the sheet or at the back of the sheet. If you need to create a new set of problems, pre press F9 to reload a sheet or print a new sheet or just open it up again. What you'll have is that you'll have a new set of randomly generated values. My recommendation is to, in all of these different tabs, is to do an entire sheet until you are getting them consistently 100% accurate. Once you're consistently getting them 100% accurate, then you worry about speed. Accuracy is always more important than speed. There are going to be new versions of the sheet distributed with new problems. Right now, if you'll notice, we've got everything up through diodes and we're working on op amp.